This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Yisrael for Chanukah. Um, this morning, I want to examine the very well-known Gemara of my Chanukah, but analyze it from a, a Lamdisha perspective um, in terms of some of the halachic aspects that sometimes are overlooked. The, uh, you should have the sheet in front of you. It's the Gemara and Shabbos, Chafal from Abayz. The Gemara asks, my Chanukah, what is Chanukah? And Rashi identifies more precisely, what does it mean, what is Chanukah? For what miracle was it established? For what miracle was it established? What's Rashi bothered by? For what miracle was it established? Rashi is bothered by that there were two miracles on Chanukah. One miracle was, one miracle was the miracle of the military victory. The, the, uh, the war of the military victory, the, the miracle of the military victory, and one was the, um, the miracle of the oil. So what the Gemara is asking is, for which one of the two miracles do we say Hallel? Do we say Hallel for the military victory, or do we say Hallel for the miracle of the oil? But more specifically, what the Gemara is asking is, we know about the military victory, but we know you're not allowed to say Hallel for military victory. Why not? Because military victory is not an open miracle. If you win a war, two soldiers against a million soldiers, it's not an open miracle. Because you could always explain it, you could always analyze it, you could always say, well, they had a better better, uh, strategic uh, uh, point of war, and therefore it's not an open miracle. What the Gemara is asking is, we need an open miracle to be able to say hello. That is why in this century, many Gedolim said that even if the... uh, I'm leaving, so I can say whatever I want. That even if the state of Israel is miraculous, most Gedolim said not to say hello for the War of Independence. For, that, for this reason. That even if it is miraculous, but nevertheless, it's only military victory. You can't say hello for military victory. It's not an open miracle. That's why the Gemara over here says, well, why did they say hello? For the miracle of the oil. Okay. The Gemara continues. The Gemara says, The 25th day is... 25th day of Kislev are the days of Hanukkah, Tamanya Inun, they are eight. Deloy la misbaid bahain, not to eulogize, or Deloy la hasanis bahain, not to fast. Shekis shenichnesu yevanim la hechal, when the Greeks enter the hechal, timu kal hashmanim shebehechal. They defiled all the oil in the hechal. This is what I want to focus on. <clears throat> these seven words, okay? I want to focus on these seven words. When the Greeks enter the Hechal, they defiled all the oil in the Hechal. What does that mean? They say, like what? The, the Greeks knew, oh, we're Tame. We're going to go after every flask of oil and Tame, 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 Tame. Because they knew that if, we would make, if they would make a Tame, we wouldn't use it. I mean, what were they thinking? Did they really make everything tummy? Which tuma? Which tuma? They opened up. How did they make a tummy? With which? Was like with, the coin was with which form of tuma? tuma. Say well, tumas mace. What tumas mace? Tumas mace, a tuma of of death. Yeah. If somebody comes into contact with a dead body, so then whatever they touch is uh, rendered uh, tame. So what did they do? They, they, they took around a dead body and they pushed the dead body into every flask of oil? No, so they're Tamei Mace. So that means they're Av and they touched every single flask of oil? First of all, could a guy be Tamei Mace? What? Could a guy be Tamei Mace? Could, no. No. So, uh, so that's gone. They can, the goyim can't make the oil tamay mace. So what tuma do they make it? Well, there's a gemara in Masech the Shabbos that the tamide beisham and tamide beisolal made eighteen gzeros. One of the gzeros they made that goyim have a status of a zav. They came out. That if a goy touches something, they have the status of a zav. A zav is a certain type of tumah, that if a man emits some, some type of emission from their body, they're a zav. A zav has a dinner of a av So if a zav 
touches something, or even if he now they say they didn't stick their finger in the oil. What they opened up every flask and they stuck their finger in the oil. So they stood there the whole day. There's a war going on, and they said, "Wait a second, we're taking a day off today." So, Greeks, why are you taking off the? Because we're opening up cans of oil and we're sticking our fingers in them. I guarantee you that didn't happen. <laughs> the answer is that Hesed is considered Nagias Kogufai. Which means if you move something, it's considered like you touched it. Yeah? yeah even if it's sealed. Because moving it is like touching the whole thing. Because you, you are touching the whole thing. What did you say? Yeah, but I'm not talking about Beisham. I'm talking about the Talmidim of Beisham. Even oh, even further. Very good. <laughs> okay, so the Gemara in Shabbos says, the Talmidim of Beisham Beis Hillel made a gzera that whatever Goyim touch, uh, Goyim have a status of a Zav, and therefore uh, Hesit is like, moving is like, Negias Kol Gufa, is like touching the whole thing. And therefore you would have to say that the Tuma that these Goyim Rendered on the uh, on the shmanim was Tumas zav, was the tumah of a zav. So one second. So how do they have one flask of oil? How do you know? Again, we're saying that that they just moved. they didn't touch it because it's illogical to say they opened up every can and they stuck their finger in it. Imagine Goyim walking around opening up cans, sticking their pinky. They didn't do that. So then what they do? They must have moved it. So if they must have moved it, then. What do you mean? They found one flask of oil that still had the signet of the Kayin Gadol? Who cares? Maybe the guy moved it. If the way they render Tumah is by moving it, maybe they move that flask, even if it's sealed. Because Halakha is if you move something, even if it's sealed, it's like touching it. So Toysus says over here, Toysus says like this, I'm not sure if this decree that Goyim have a status of Azov went into effect yet, but if it did go into effect, you have to say that this flask of oil they found in the ground... And they found it like, like buried in the ground in a way that we, we, knew, we know they didn't move it. Okay. But that means all the other flasks, we, we assume they moved. Now let me ask you a question. Do we know for sure they moved it? Oh, okay. So let's come to one thing. This decree that Goyim have a status of a Zav, when, who made it? The Talmidim Beisham Beisela. Who are the Talmidim Beisham Beisela? Talmidim Beisham Beisela are... <laughs> Shimon, Gamliel, and Shimon. They were Nasiya Yisrael. When were they the Nasiyim? A hundred years before Bayis Sheni. That's what the Gemara says in the Sech of Shabbos that the, <coughs> the Nasiyim, that Shimon, Gamliel, and Shimon, they were Nahag, Nasiyusam, Lefnei Habayis, 100 years. The miracle of Hanukkah, how many years did it happen before the destruction of the second base of Mikdash? 206. 206. 206 years, the Gemara says, Why, what's the Cheshman? Before this was 400. Malchus Cheshman only lasted 103 years, and Very good. Cheshman lasted 103 years, and Malchus Hordis lasted 103 years. Okay? So the Hanukkah miracle was 206 years before Choram Bayasheni, and the decree that Goyim have a status of Azov was 100 years later. Actually, 106 years later. So that means, what, what's going on here? What do you mean the Yivanim were matame all the Chashmanim, all the Ishmanim in the Heichal? How are they matame it? Because they're Goyim. And Goyim have the status of a Zav. But Goyim will not have the status of a Zav, not for another 106 years. Okay, so this is the Kasha of the Pri Chadash. Got the Kasha? The whole way they were matame it was to Mazav. That's a, a, a Gzer Drabonon that did not go into effect yet. Okay, so the Pri Chadash gives... Two answers. By the way, this is all by way of introduction to what we're going to talk about today. Prichadosh says that Avada, there was always a decree that Goyim have a status of a Zav regarding Kachim. Regarding sacrificial property, Goyim always have the status of a Zav. It's the, the Tamide, Beisham, and Beishilo, they furthered the decree and they extended it even to Truma. But even before, even before the, the Yurches uh, Gezerah, the Yurches Gezerahs, they already decreed a hundred years earlier that Goyim have a status of a Zav for Kachim. Goyim always had the status of a Zav. Or, says the Bichadosh, Goyim always had the status of a Zav even for Truma. It's just that a hundred years later they decreed that it's such a strong Gezerah we will even burn Truma 
because Goyim have a status of Zavta. Okay, so bottom line is, the Tuma that we are dealing with is Tuma de Rabbanon. What's the Tuma de Rabbanon? That the Rabbanon were Goyzer, that Goyim have the status of a Zav. Okay, that means, if you're speaking to a Gentile, and they emit some of their Roik, Roik is spittle, and it whew, lands on you, you now become Tameh. That's why, in the times of the Gemara, the Amoiroim would not speak to Amei Ame Haaretz. They wouldn't even go near them. They would not go within Dalet Amos of Amei Why? Because they made a decree that Amei Haaretz also have a status of Azov. And the thing is, if the Amei Haaretz speaks to you and gets a little bit too close for comfort, then they're going to make you Tameh. So Tameh Chachamim, they kept their distance. Or they had special, I don't know what, no, they had seal. But then uh, they didn't have those back then, so they would not speak to Amei Haaretz. Okay. Rabbi, the regular soldiers in the Yavon, they were to me. They were on the bed right. alone. The thing so is, an automatic to me. But Goyim, got to do with Goyim can become Tamei Meis. They cannot. They're not Tamei. So, what, what's the problem? You take some uh, Chiloni and put him inside the Avedim Gashem. It's not the problem. What do you mean? Like to make it very quick. How? The, the Greek will take him and put him in bed and that to make everything Tamei. You mean they took a Jew and they said, Jew, Open up every little thing of oil. I mean, just to get the seven things from that box over there. It takes 20 minutes. Yeah. Who, you think somebody, you think somebody went into the, to the, to the Oitzer and stuck his finger in each one? Okay. So that's, so this whole, the whole Hanukkah is because the Yavanim were matame, the oils, with which Toma, Toma Drabanan. So ask the Chsam Soifer, Toma Drabanan. So I have a very simple Eitzah. Why didn't the Rabbanon say... Why did the Rabbans say, you know what, we made a gzera that all the oil is tameh, we're not going to uphold our gzera because otherwise the whole avoid is going to be nisbatel. So you know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, for one year we'll say the gzera is off. After all, there's no tumah raisa we're dealing with, only dealing with rabbinic decree. So because of rabbinic decree, we're going to shut down the Beis HaMikdash. And Hashem needs to make a miracle because of gzera drabanan. So it says, some stuff, yeah, you see from Hanukkah, the whole miracle of Hanukkah was only to be able to preserve a din de Rabbanon. Could it not been for a din de Rabbanon, you could have just used the oil. You, there, there's nothing to worry about. The fact that Hashem made a miracle that the oil, which was enough to last for one day, lasted for eight days, was to show everybody how important the Xeros de Rabbanon are, how the Dine de Rabbanon are. Because otherwise, we could have just said, you know what, let's overlook the din de Rabbanon for one year. The whole miracle of Hanukkah is to uphold Dine de Rabbanon. But Hanukkah also the Medani Menorah is the Medani Mizbeach. Yeah, that's because Mizbeach Shiktsu Hayavanim. That they 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 may have used it for Avodah Zara. Okay, but now this is where I want to get to. So they were matame all the Shmanim and the Hechal. How do we know? But well, we caught them on camera going to every single oil. That, that means they went to every jug and they moved it. How do we know they moved every jug? You saw it on the video. <laughs> How do we know? What? How do we know? The answer is, we don't know. It's a suffix. Suffix do'i raisa. But it's not even a do'i raisa. So the answer is, this is not a matter of suffix do'i raisa, suffix do'i raisa, It's a matter of suffix tuma. So the question is, what are the laws of suffix tuma? Is Suffolk Tame Tame or Suffolk Tame Tahar? <laughs> well, you say Cheskis Kashus. Well, there's a rule. Suffolk Tuma Bershus Harabim Tahar. Suffolk Tuma Bershus Hayachid Tame. So the question is, what is the Beis Hamikdash? Is the Beis Hamikdash Bershus Harabim? Beis Hamikdash Bershus Hayachid. You would think it's a Shus Harabim. Anybody could go there. But Could anybody go there? No. At least two two the the Heichal, you have to be a Kohen to go there. Yeah, the Heichal, yeah, but some are not yeah. The Azara, anyone could go. So the question is, where did they store the oil? If they stored the oil in the Heichal, then, since we don't know what happened, we would say, Suffolk, Toma, Bershus, Hayachit, Tameh. If they stored the, the oil in the Azara, that's Rishus Harabim, then we should say, Suffolk, Toma, Bershus Harabim, Tahar. So, you have on your sheet the Gemara in Masech the Shabbos. <coughs> and you have all the way on the bottom of the page, you have the Gilyan Hashas. You see it? You see the Gilyan Hashas? 
all the way on the bottom of the page in little, little letters. Okay? The Gilion Hashasar, Rabbi Akiva Eger's footnotes on the Gemara. And Rabbi Akiva Eger says, Ayin Birambam, Parakei Mehilchas Beisabachira, Allah Haches. Says Rabbi Kiv Eger, look in the Rambam in the fifth parak of the of Hilchas Beis Hamikdash Halachaches, and you know what it says over there? It says over there that there were four chambers in the Azara. One of the chambers was called Lishkas Beis Shemania, the chamber of the oil, and this chamber was located where in the southwest of the Azara. And this was the chamber that they kept the oil. So if the chamber that they kept the oil was in the Azara, and the Azara is a Shus Harabim, what Rabbi Kiveger is bamerking, what Rabbi Kiveger is, is pointing out, is that how could the Gemara say when the Yivanim entered the Heichal, they were matame all the oil in the Heichal. But where did they store the oil? They didn't store it in the Heichal. They stored it in the Azara. How do we know? It says Rabbi Kiveger, look in the Rambam. The Rambam says, the Lishkas base Shemanya was stored in the Azara, and therefore Rabbi Kiveger's bothered by is, why, did they, why are we worried they're matami the oil? We didn't see it. It's a Suffolk. Suffolk Toma Bershos Harabim Tahar. That's Rabbi Kiveger's kasha. He doesn't say anything. That's how Rabbi Kiveger works. Rabbi Kiveger just says, look over here, and you need to figure out, based on what it says over there, what he's bothered by. So then Rabbi Kiveger says, Va'ayin b'tshuvas bate kahuna chilek alef, b'beis vad simen alef. Look in Shalsa Tshuvas bate kahuna. Shalsa Tshuvas bate kahuna was written by Rabbi Yitzchak HaKoyen Rappaport, who was a Koyen, and that's why he named his sefer bate kahuna. <coughs> and the Shalsa Tshuvas bate kahuna asked this question, that what do you mean, kishen nechnesu yivanum lehechal, timu kalashan shebehechal, they didn't store the oil in the hechal, they stored the oil in the, in the Azara. So he answers as follows. Different types of oil were needed in the Beis HaMikdash for different purposes. Some oil was needed for the Menachos and some oil was needed for the Menorah. The oil that was needed for the Menachos was not as pure and as high of a level as the oil needed for the Menorah. The oil needed for the Menorah has to be Kasas, Shemen Zayis, Zach, Kasas, like the first drop of the olive, the most pure drop. They stored the oil for the Menachos in the Azara. They did not store the oil for the Menorah in the Azara. They stored the oil for the Menorah in the Heichal. And the Heichal was not a Rishos Harabim. The Heichal was a Rishos Hayachid. And therefore, Safeg Tuma Rishos Hayachid is Tameh. How did you come to him this Based on this question. <laughs> In other words, if the Gemara is saying they were metameit, and because of that we had no, we were stuck, we were up the creek without a paddle, then you see from this Gemara they must have stored the oil for the menorah, not in the Azar, in the Heichal. They could have used the lesser oil for the menorah? No. You can't use it for the... Um... Yeah, is there a plane, there's a, I th- there's a plane of shoe on my table there. I'm a sackless out. You need to guard the camera. Can I show on the table? <laughs> um, I, I do, I do, no, I don't think you're allowed to. Question is, if everybody's tame, whether with the Yevet, you could use that oil. But, that but we're not dealing, what? But that was the case, everybody was tame. The question is, well, well, the pump, yes. the fuel oil. Yeah, but, okay, but we're not really dealing with that question. We're dealing with the issue of, what do you mean they were matame all the oil? It was only a suffix, and suffix tuma is tahar. So we're answering no, they stored the oil, in the Heichal, and the Heichal is just Hayachet, Safek Tuma is Tame. So you want to say, yeah, but everyone's Tame, so we should, we should say, but the Yavet? Okay, that's a different question. That's a different question of, could you, could you use Tame oil when everybody's Tame? But regarding the question of Safek Tuma, we're saying it was Safek Tuma Bershus Hayachet. Okay, I want to tell you two other very lumdash answers to this question. Okay, again, the question is, Safek Tuma Bershus Harabim is Tame, and presumably, thank you, the oil in the the oil in the Azara was a Rishos Harabim. I'm going to tell you two answers. One answer is the answer of the Marsham. The Marsham was one of the Gedorle Apoiskim at the end of the 19th century. Rav Shalom Mordechai Akoyin Mi Barjan. And he wrote Hagois on the Sefer Orchis Chaim. And he says the following. Based on the Rashba and Masech Danida, Safek Tuma in Rishus Hayachid is Tameh. 
Safek Tuma and Rishus Harabim is Tahar. Where do we learn that out from? What's the basis of that? Why do we say Safek Tuma in Rishus and I mean, Tuma is Tuma. Either Safek is Tame or Safek is Tahar. What's the nafkamina between Rishus Harabim and Rishus Hayachid? So the Rajba says we learn it out from the Saita. Right? Dafiyami is learning Saita now? We learn it out from Saita. By a Saita, if a Saita goes into seclusion with a man, and we don't know of us, so we don't know what happened. We say, if it was an Amakoim Seisar, if it was a Rishus Hayachid, she's Tameh. Probably something happened. If it was an open area, she says she's Tahar. So the Halacha, that Safek Tumah Rishus Hayachid, Tameh, is learnt out from the din, din of a Saita. That Safek Tumah Rishus Hayachid is Tameh, Safek Tumah Rishus Harabim is Tahar. Which means that it's governed by the laws of Yichud. That wherever there's a law of Yichud, we say Safek Tameh is Tameh. Wherever there's no law of Yichud, we say Safek Tameh is Tah. Now normally the Azara is Rishus Harabim. Why? Because it's impossible to have Yichud in the Azara. The, the Azara is full of Jews. Right? Could a man, right? We know the Halacha is a man, cannot be together with a woman in a room. It's Yichud. Law of Yichud. Some Yichud is Dairaisa, some Yichud is Drabanan. So let's say you say, yeah, but what am I supposed to do? I have a baby, and I have a babysitter at home. Good, that's why you have a babysitter, and that's why you cannot be in the home. That's why you have a babysitter for. You can't be in the house with the babysitter at the same time. So it's Rav Yichud. But she's a guy. Good, she can't be in the house with her. You need to leave. So what should you do? You should jump out the window immediately. The Vilna gun jumped out the window. That was something else. No, there's yes, there's Mendel Herodic, no? No, there's a different story. He jumped out the there's a different story. There's Mendel Herodic also. <laughs> Maybe he jumped out the window a different time also, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> but um the way you could open the door, then it's not Yichud. you could open the door. Fine. So the Azara is usually Shusaram, why? Because it's full of Jews. But 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 when the Yavanim enter the Hechal it was not full of Jews. Who was it full of? It was full of Greeks. <coughs> Is a woman allowed to be miyached? Let's say, let's say you have two men and one woman. You're allowed to. Two men and one woman is permitted. One man, two women is not permitted. What about 20 goyim and one woman? So, no way. <laughs> not a chance. What do you mean? 20 Jews and one woman is mutter? Yeah, because they remind each other. Yeah, but 20 guy and a woman, they also remind each other, but they remind each other of Jews and young. Okay? So 20 guy and one. So when the Yavanim entered the Heichal, when the Yavanim entered the Heichal, it had a din of Yichud. So even though there were hundreds of guy there, it was like Rosh Hayachid, Safek Tuma was Tameh. That's the answer of the Marsham. It's a Goinistic answer. Normally, the Azara is a Shasarabim. Why? Because it's full of Yidin. But when the Yivanim entered in, it was full of Goyim. Once Yivanim entered in, it had a status of a place where there's Yichud. Once it has a status of a place where there's Yichud, it has a din of a Rishus Ha Yachid. The only ones that are no also. Even though, uh, even though, even though they're not filmed, we still, we still say... It depends. then... Uh... Okay. One more answer. I have a question. Let's get back to the original question. Why couldn't the Jews use Tamei oil? But Tuma is Hutcher B'Tzibor. Which means if the majority of Klai so is Tamei, you could use Tamei oil. So the famous answer of the Pnei Yeshua is, you could, but we wanted to do things, the Hidar, we wanted to do things on the highest possible way. Okay, fine. Tuma is Hutcher B'Tzibor, but we wanted to be Mahadran. But isn't it like all of them were made dead because they were fighting? Uh, what? Well, you were Ochamim, so they were already Tameim, so they were touching something and standing right away. So they didn't touch that jug of oil. The kid from <coughs> he came back from the battle. And Taisus and Masech the Saita says that why is Tumah Hutra Betzibah? Right? There's a rule. Uh, excuse me. That Safek Tumah B'Shosh Harabim is Tahar. Why? Says Taisus Kavachaymer. Make a Kavachaymer. What's the Kavachaymer? If Tumah is Hutra Betzibah, 
Kavachoymer Safek Tumah B'Rishus HaRabim is Tahar. You hear the Kavachoymer? That if Vaday Tumah, when the Tzibor is Tameh, is Motur, then Kavachoymer Safek Tumah B'Rishus HaRabim should be Motur. Toysus makes that Kavachoymer. So, the Belzer Rebbe said like this. If the whole Makar, that Safek Tumah B'Rishus HaRabim is Tahar, is a Kavachoymer from... Tomahotcho Betzibor, but Klai Yisrael didn't want to rely on Tomahotcho Betzibor. They didn't. They weren't willing to be seimich on Tomahotcho Betzibor. So they weren't willing to be seimich on that. Then that destroys the Kavachaymer, because the whole Kavachaymer Savik Tomah Shosh Rabim is Tahar is based on Tomahotcho Betzibor, right? What's the Kavachaymer? If Tomos Hotcho Betzibor Kavachaymer Savik Tomah Shosh Rabim is Tahar, yeah, but the Jews weren't willing to rely on. Tomahotcha Betzibor. Once they're not willing to rely on Tomahotcha Betzibor, that destroys the Kava Choymer, and we would not apply the rule of Safek Tumah B'Shus Harabim Tahar. So we asked, who says the Yivanu made everything Tahar? It's a Safek, and Safek Tumah B'Shus Harabim is Tahar. The answer is, it's only Tahar because of a Kava Choymer. The Kava Choymer is based on Tomahotcha Betzibor. The Jews are not relying on Tomahotcha Betzibor, and therefore the whole Kava Choymer goes down the drain. Others say like this, one last answer. Again, based on the Rashba, that Rishos Harab and Rishos Hayochid are is, uh, determined by Hilchos Yichud. And at night, Toysa says Masech the Saita, nighttime even Rishos Harabim has the status of Rishos Hayochid. That's why, you know, somebody, uh, they, they say Chassan and Kala, you know, the people who are going out, you have to be careful in the country. But that's a separate thing, that's Stamadin. You have to be careful. If you're driving together in a car, if you're in an area where nobody's around, that's also yichud. That's yichud. But anyway, at night, Toysvah says, Toysvah says at night, there's always has a status of Shus HaYachad. So it could be the Yivanim came in during the nighttime. And during the nighttime, Safek Tumah B'Shus HaRabim is Tameh. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.